In the first six months of this year, Turkey's international trade in the Turkish lira experienced a boost in volume. And many of Turkey's trade partners who are members of the SCO and BRICS are calling for the same thing, to move away from trading in U.S. dollars and instead use local currencies. But is this a viable long-term option for the whole world? Let's take a look at this report. And now to talk about Turkey's growing foreign trade in lira amidst the global demand for local currencies. Joining me now from Jaipur, India, is Anil Tirgunayat. He is a former Indian ambassador across the Middle East and the Mediterranean. And from Istanbul, Murat Farman. He is a professor at Beykent University. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Murat, Turkey's foreign trade volume that has been settled in lira increased by 129% in the first six months of this year. So what does this tell us about how Turkey is diversifying its trade? First and foremost, uh, it is a healthy sign that uh, Turkey's new diversification strategy in terms of conducting some part of foreign trade or business in Turkish lira is gaining momentum because, as you have mentioned, uh, we see a 130% increase uh, uh, regarding uh, this year's uh, uh, first six months results uh, in comparison to the previous year. Uh, Turkey's enrichment policy under the title of uh, New Horizons and New Ways and Means in uh, Doing uh, Exports and and imports, uh, as I have mentioned before, is gaining momentum. And it's only a part uh, of the picture that Turkey is now uh, becoming a partner or an active player in so-called de-dollarization of uh, foreign trade yes. uh, movement. So, Anil, what's the reason behind Turkish Lira's gains in international trade? I mean, where does Turkey stand when it comes to settlements with local currencies? Is this a newcomer to this trend? Well, this is happening globally. In fact, if you come to think of it, the Indian rupee also is being greatly accepted. Uh, and already more than 12 countries have signed uh, this agreement, uh, which is called the United Int uh, Interface, uh, in which the exchanges between the Indian currency and the uh, local currencies takes place. Likewise, the Italian lira and the Turkish lira, all these are working together in that yeah. sense. So what we are looking at today is that more and more trade is taking place in national currencies. Hmm. And this has happened essentially because of the weaponization of the financial instruments that has happened during the Russia-Ukraine war. And that is what is making more and more countries nervous and resorting uh, to this bilateral trade so that transaction costs are reduced and you are able to be very sure about what you are doing, actually, rather than going to third currencies or some other currencies. So I think this is a trend that is likely to stay on. And we know that Turkey is also quite interested in joining the, uh, the BRICS and some other organizations where there are other uh, currency mechanisms are coming out. Uh, so there is a, a, a conscious movement yes. uh, on the part of the countries to identify uh, the ways in which 
their countries can progress as far as trade and investments are concerned. So you both mentioned like what's happening with the lira is nothing new. It's part of a global trend we have seen speed up this year uh, with countries like China, Russia, India and several Gulf countries are looking to uh, settle trade in local currencies. And he'll just mentioned the weaponization of financial instruments by the U.S. Uh, shutting the, its rivals out of SWIFT uh, impacted this. But Murat, what else is pushing this move away from the U.S. dollar? Well, as uh, the Honorable Ambassador uh, indicated that uh, there is a move towards de-dollarization, uh, there is a hype around de-dollarization per se. Uh, however, let me be straight and strict right at the beginning. Despite all the hype around de-dollarization and the pioneering and um, uh, significant roles played by Chinese yuan, uh, and in the recent months, uh, Indian rupee uh, is gaining a lot of momentum and Russian ruble, uh, ruble uh, the greenback, uh, the dollar still reigns supreme. Uh, it dates back to Bretton Woods Agreement, uh, even before the conclusion of the last uh, Great War, uh, as uh, the uh, upcoming uh, uh, victors uh, have uh, decided uh, and uh, designed uh, the so-called uh, future uh, eco economic uh, global structure. And from those days on, uh, dollar reigns supreme. It's the uh, dominant uh, financial fiscal institution uh, instrument. Uh, Fed po Fed policies, therefore Federal Reserve policies, and each and every kind of uh, so-called Fed uh, decisions play a key uh, role uh, in determining the value and fluctuation of the financial uh, units yes. and the financial uh, assets all over the world. Uh, despite uh, United States' uh, bold movement back in August 1971 of uh, disconnecting, uh, in the very basic terms, disconnecting uh, uh, dollar uh, uh, with uh, the gold uh, collateral, uh, I guess uh, still uh, greenback reigns supreme, yes. both in terms of reserves and in term of international trade. So Anil, uh, India and the United Arab Emirates have recently uh, settled trade in local currencies. What's its significance and how would the latest MOU expand their trade ties moving forward? Well, as far as India and UAE are concerned, the UAE is our third largest trading partner uh, after the United States and China. And uh, the trade between the two countries is about $85 billion. And uh, we have uh, a very vast bouquet of uh, investments uh, and uh, the trade basket uh, that goes on. And so therefore, it was decided during the visit of the prime minister uh, that uh, UAE will and India will be uh, operating. Uh, and it makes sense also within their national currencies. And their harm, as you know, has recently uh, been quite a major currency as far as trade with Russia was concerned for many countries. And India's trade also with Russia has increased during this time quite significantly as far as imports of oil. So it becomes also a transitional currency, uh, a currency which becomes via media. And therefore, I think between India and UAE, it is a very significant movement. But it is not only that. If your prime minister was also visiting France and first time a European country agreed uh, for the uh, Indian UPI system as well as the Indian rupee. So the Indian travelers and the trade eventually, we are looking at that also happening in greater part of the world. And as I mentioned, more than 14 countries, the last one being Sri Lanka, their yeah. president was in India recently. He also preferred to do that. Now, um, as Mr. Murad correctly mentioned that in the 70s, President Nixon decided uh, that he will not have a dollar be backed by US by gold. And that is something I think it made USA, uh, the greenbacks, as he said, more of a psychological currency. There was no option available at that time. When euro came, we know that euro had a lot of stress before going. And I was ambassador to Libya, and I know when uh, Gaddafi tried to have a gold dinar as an alternate currency, what happened to him? We all know that. So that is also the thing to no doubt in the near future, because more than 80% transactions even today are conducted through SWIFT and through the international banks, which are generally governed by the United States. But at the same time, I think that time has come and more and more countries are realizing this fact. Of yes. course, they will all have to eventually learn to coexist 
and to find clearing mechanisms among themselves, China, SIPs, the Russia's SFMS, or the India's UPI, and some other countries are developing their own currency clearing mechanisms. So I think that we will see more diversification in the financial instruments. Yes, we also see that in Latin yes, America. So, uh, Murat, Indonesia uh, will be the second country after the United Arab Emirates to have a settlement deal with India using local currencies. So, what's that stake for both countries' economies? Well, uh, but I must say that uh, the observation for the fact that uh, although China has been leading this de-dollarization movement and hailed as the champion of the cause, in the recent uh, months, uh, under the constitution of BRICS and also independent, as well as independently, uh, India seems to gaining a lot of ground and uh, looking uh, for uh, the position of the new champion for, or maybe uh, the forthcoming voice in this de-dollarization movement. Uh, no wonder uh, that, uh, according to a recent estimate by Goldman Sachs. Uh, although we are expecting China to take over as a number one economic power uh, of the world, overtaking the United States in the coming years, it will not be any longer than India will be uh, taking that first place. Uh, so all some of these uh, um, um, so-called subjects for criticism regarding China's uh, candidacy to become leader in uh, our search for a stable coin uh, or maybe an alternative to the uh, ever-dominant uh, US dollar, uh, I guess uh, India now is uh, kind of uh, replacing China uh, as the champion of the coast. Yes. Uh, of course, if you look at the history, uh, there have been many other uh, so-called reserve monies or uh, coins, stable coins, such as uh, uh, Gulden, uh, British pound, uh, France franc. Uh, but uh, some people say that uh, the days for dollars are numbered. Yes. However, if you listen to uh, our good old uh, investor uh, wizard Warren Buffett, uh, we have to wait till 2065 till dollar uh, loses uh, her dominance. And Paul Krugman, the Nobel laureate, uh, thinks that uh, there is a slim chance in the near future that dollar will be replaced uh, yes. as the reserve money. So, uh, Anil, talk to us about India's position. What kind of a balancing act does the New Delhi administration play when it comes to this de-dollarization campaign? and its relations with the United States. As you know, the United States is our largest trading partner. It is also a major investor in India. It has become a major uh, technology partner for India. And we have a global comprehensive strategic partnership with the United States. And uh, simultaneously with Russia also, we have a special and privileged partnership, a strategic partnership. So I think that India has been very clearly able to balance because India says very clearly that it stands for the global south and it stands for India's interests. That is very clearly uh, available to everyone who wants to deal with India. That is the roadmap that India takes. Uh, and I think that this is quite understandable to all the countries uh, that we make our uh, own choices in our, our own national interest and in the larger interest of the global south. So that is where India stands, I think. And this is broadly acceptable. This year, we are also chairing, uh, we recently uh, chaired the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, where China and Russia, both are partners there, and uh, some other countries are also, including Turkey, are interested in joining. Then we have, uh, uh, we are now currently chairing the G20, and where the financial track is extremely important. So as far as India is concerned, it is not looking to displace dollar or any other currency or compete with any currency. It is trying to create an ecosystem Alternatives. in which there are lesser shocks uh, available to us. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.